Hello, my name is Sven Stelberg. I'm a technical trainer at GAMU. Today we have two topics. The first one is the optimal alignment of the GAMU valve body in a horizontal pipeline. And the second topic is the diaphragm replacement of a shut-off diaphragm in a GAMU valve. These are very important but also sensitive steps to make the following process more efficient. When we align a GAMU diaphragm valve body in a horizontal pipeline, it is important to pay attention to the obstructed outlet. At first it looks like then the obstructed discharge is not possible with a diaphragm valve, but it is possible, and I'm going to explain how. This is very important for the maximum added value of the operating media, as these are usually very expensive and every drop counts. An unobstructed outlet is also important for optimal cleaning and sterilizing. If the diaphragm valve is installed so that the actuator points vertical upwards, the operating media, cleaning media or the condensate from the cleaning steam can remain behind the sealing web, which seals in the direction of the flow during operation. We also have this problem if we install the actuator horizontally or vertically downwards. In these three valve orientations, residues form on the valve. These residues can cause contaminations on the new batch. To prevent these problems, the GAMI stainless steel diaphragm valve body is designed in such a way that at a clearly defined angle, the medium can drain off unhindered in the direction of the outlet angle of the pipeline. Here we cannot guarantee that the medium will flow out of the pipeline completely free of residue. Also due to the keratin surface properties and the viscosity of the media, residues of the media may remain in the pipeline. This clearly defined angle at which the valve body is to be installed may vary depending on the connection standards and manufacturing variants of the valve bodies. The information on the angles can be found in the specification sheet of the angle gauge WG600. To make it easier for our customers to install the valve, we have attached identification features for the valve bodies and offer corresponding accessories for efficient and correct installation. The identification features are called hash marks. The hash marks are standard on the valve bodies of AMSE PPE. This is the American Society of Mechanical Engineers in Bioprocessing Equipment and GIS, Japanese Industrial Standards. However, these are currently being step by step adopted on the other connection standards as well. The hash marks are represented by four notches on the GAMI valve bodies, two per connection piece. These are always aligned so that one per spike guard always points vertically upwards when the valve body is installed in the correct angle. Even if the other connection standards do not yet have the hash marks, their outlet angle is known and can be also found in the specification. The hash marks make it possible to quickly see in the installed state whether the valve is installed at the correct angle and can also serve as orientation when installing the valve bodies. But to align the valve bodies exactly according to the specification, we have the angle gauge for the diaphragm valves, the WG600. To do this, set the bubble level of the angle gauge to the angle applicable to the valve body and fix the bubble level using the knurled screw. Then attach the angle gauge to the valve body and fix the angle gauge by turning the locking screw by approximately 180 degrees. After fixing the angle gauge on the valve body, Align the valve body so that the spirit level is located between the two marks. The angle gauge can be used several times. It is available in the diaphragm size MG10 to MG100. You need a different angle gauge for each diaphragm size because the positioning pins are oriented to the hole pattern that connects the actuator to the valve body. If you look at the valve body, you will see that the outermost point of the ceiling web is on the same level with the lowest point of the pipeline. This ensures that the ceiling web is no longer a barrier for the medium. Now we came to the diaphragm replacement on a GAMI pneumatic diaphragm valve. In the case of diaphragm valves, especially in the pharmaceutical sector, the shut-off diaphragms are usually replaced during preventive maintenance. This is because very sensitive and expensive media are usually processed and produced there. Preventive maintenance minimizes unnecessary downtimes of the plant and thus the loss of the media. 
In addition, this also protects the personnel at the plant from unintentional leakage of the media. For this reason, we will now discuss the correct replacement of the gaming pneumatic diaphragm valves. It is important to ensure that the steps are carried out in the correct sequence. Today I will restrict myself to the one-piece elastomer diaphragms in the diaphragm size 8 to 80. Gemi offers two different fastening variants of these diaphragms, with which the diaphragm is fixed in the actuator. The square diaphragm in the diaphragm size 8 is held in the actuator by the geometry of a rubber pin. In the diaphragm size 10 to 80, we have a rectangular diaphragm with a fretted pin. When disassembling the diaphragms, the valve must be first moved to the open position, so that the diaphragm is no longer pressed onto the ceiling plug and the actuator with the diaphragm can be safely removed from the valve body. To be able to remove the actuator, the connection screws between the actuator and the valve body must be loosened. The screws must be loosened crosswise so that the diaphragm don't get any damage. When the activator is lifted off the valve body, the valve is moved to the closed position, so that the diaphragm can be removed from the activator. On the diaphragm size 8, the rubber pin is carefully released from the thrust piece by hand. No tools are necessary for this. For the diaphragms with the threaded pin, the diaphragm is unscrewed counterclockwise. When the diaphragm is unscrewed, make sure that the pressure piece does not fall out of the actuator. After disassembling the diaphragm, it is analyzed for damage. Even if the diaphragm does not yet show any signs of wear, it cannot be reinstalled in the valve after disassembly. Over the time that the diaphragm has been installed in the valve, the material of the diaphragm has settled and adapted to the geometry in the installed position. Therefore, if the same diaphragm is used again, the tightness cannot be guaranteed, since it is not possible to position the old diaphragm exactly the same again. Factors such as the hole of the connection screws in the flange of the actuator, as well as the uniform tightening of the connection screws or the exact positioning in the actuators plays a role in the tightness of the valve. When installing the new diaphragm size 8, the rubber pin is tied into the thrust piece. In doing so, it is important to dispense with any lubricants. By placing the diaphragm at an angle and making a twist motion when pressing in the rubber pin, the two-part pressure piece is pressed apart, making it easier to fix the rubber pin. In the process, the head of the rubber pin penetrates the undercut of the two-part pressure piece and wedges itself there. Even if no ceiling geometry is shown on the diaphragm for this diaphragm size, the information tab must be aligned parallel to the ceiling web of the pressure piece and the valve body, so that it can be seen from the outside whether the ceiling contour of the pressure piece is parallel to the ceiling web of the valve body. This is very important for this size, since the bolting flange is square, and the actuator can thus be quickly set up rotated by 90 degrees. Thus, no tightness can be guaranteed via the ceiling web. When installing the diaphragms with the threaded pin, the diaphragm is screwed into the actuator up to the stop. If the whole pattern of the rectangular flange does not match when the stop is reached, the diaphragm is turned maximum 180 degrees counterclockwise. Since the diaphragm has a rectangular hole pattern, we don't need more than 180 degrees, because the hole pattern is covered twice in one full rotation of 360 degrees. If you screw the diaphragm too far out of the actuator, it can happen that you push the thread pin through the diaphragm into the ceiling web of the valve body and thus destroy the valve. With this diaphragm variant, the information lash must also run parallel to the ceiling geometry of the thrust piece and the valve body. Diaphragm with threaded pin also have ceiling geometry on the diaphragm to ensure tightness. But if you position the information tab correctly, the ceiling geometries will also match. After the diaphragm has been aligned, the actuator is moved back to the open position and then the actuator with the diaphragm is placed on the valve body. Make sure that the seal geometries are parallel to each other before applying the connection screws. On the diaphragm size 8, the connection screws are screwed directly into the flange of the actuator. Before hand tightening the screws crosswise, a washer must be placed between the screw and the bearing surface of the valve body. In the variants where you need a nut, this is also underlaid with a washer. After the four screws have been hand tightened, the valve is moved into the closed position, so that the diaphragm can center itself and can be screwed in as stress-free as possible. When you tighten the screws, make sure that the screws are tightened crosswise. Repeat this process until you can see an even bulge of the diaphragm on the outside. 
As soon as this bulge can be seen, a compression of approximately 10 to 15% of the diaphragm have been achieved. This is necessary to close the valve tightly and does not deform the diaphragm too much that the service life is affected. We have defined this visual feature since it is usually not possible to work with a torque wrench in a plant. In addition, the torque of the bolting, such as the materials of the diaphragm, the temperature the lubricants used and the condition of the bolts and the nuts. After changing the diaphragm, the following should be noted. Due to the settling behavior of the elastomer, the compression of the diaphragm must be checked and its flange tightened if necessary before commissioning the system. For valves used in sterile applications, this should also be done again after the first sterilization cycle. Depending on the use of the valve, further cyclical checks during operation are recommended. Closing limiters, attachments and accessories such as stroke limiters, optical position indicators, electrical position feedback, positioners and process controllers must be recalibrated after the change of the shutoff diaphragm. Thank you for your attention. If you have further questions, you can contact our sales team. If you want to learn more about Gaming Valves, we offer training courses with different knowledge levels and individual topics.